Hi, it's Patrick Hutzel from IntensiveCareHotline.com where we instantly improve the lives of families of critically ill patients in intensive care so that you can have real power, real control and so that you can influence decision making fast even if you're not a doctor or a nurse in intensive care. This is another episode of Your Questions Answered and in last week's episode I answered another question that our readers ask quite frequently and the question was how long can a critically ill patient be on a ventilator with a tracheostomy in intensive care? You can check it out by clicking on the link below this video. In this week's episode of Your Questions Answered, I answer another question that many of our readers want to know about if their loved one is critically ill in intensive care and in this week I want to answer how long does it take to wake up after an induced coma? If your critically ill loved one has been admitted to intensive care and if your critically ill loved one is or has been in an induced coma, you have of course been wondering how long does it take to wake up after an induced coma? It's a great question to ask and after all it's a question you would want to know the answer to, especially since you are feeling rather helpless in such a stressful, difficult, challenging and overwhelming situation such as having a loved one critically ill in intensive care. So let's get to the meat of the question and let's get a look at the answers. If your critically ill loved one is or has been in an induced coma and has been ventilated with a breathing tube, it can be rather normal that your critically ill loved one isn't waking up straight away. There sometimes can be a delay in waking up because of the amount and the drugs given for sedation and the opiates given, which are pain medications such as morphine and fentanyl, whilst your critically ill loved one is in the induced coma. Also, the reason why your critically ill loved one has been in an induced coma, for example, an induced coma for head or brain injuries is generally speaking more difficult to come out of compared to an induced coma for straightforward surgery or for less acute and soft admissions. Also, the length of the induced coma, generally speaking, the longer the induced coma, the more likely it is to have a delay in waking up. Waking up is generally speaking a process and not an event that you can compare to switching on a light with a dimmer rather than with a light switch. Your critically ill loved one's age might be a factor as well, generally speaking. With increasing age, the higher risk of going through a delay when waking up and coming out of the induced coma. Another risk factor is severe or heavy drug and alcohol abuse. If your critically ill loved one is using drugs and or alcohol, it's more likely that when induced into a coma that a lot more sedative and opiate drugs are being used compared to a patient who doesn't use drugs and or drinks alcohol. When waking up and coming out of the induced coma, your critically ill loved one has a higher chance of being confused and agitated. Sometimes they may even be aggressive. So, let's break it even further down and look at time frames. So, the first example I use is when your critically ill loved one is a quote-unquote straightforward and or quote-unquote soft admission to intensive care. If your critically ill loved one is a straightforward admission to intensive care after elective or planned surgery or is a soft admission to intensive care for a medical emergency on a ward or something like that, your critically ill loved one should come off the ventilator or respirator and out of the induced coma relatively quickly within 12 to 72 hours. In those circumstances, your critically ill loved one should be on short acting sedatives such as propofol or midazolam. Is, or, and propofol is a sedative that is widely used in intensive care to put patients asleep and it's used as a short acting sedative meaning that when switched off, your critically ill loved one should wake up relatively quickly. That can still mean that your critically ill loved one can be confused after the induced coma. Second example. Your critically ill loved one has been in an induced coma and ventilated for three to seven days. If your critically ill loved one is a more complicated admission to intensive care and is more unstable, such as after a car accident or after major surgery where complications occurred 
or if your critically ill loved one sustained a head or brain injury or had a heart attack or a cardiac arrest. Then the breathing tube, the ventilator, respirator and the induced coma might be required for more than 72 hours and if your loved one is stable and progressing breathing up on the ventilator or respirator with the support from the ventilator or respirator being reduced then again your critically ill loved one should be able to come off the ventilator or respirator after the sedation and the opiates which is the pain medication have been removed and minimized. By removing, weaning and minimizing the drugs that keep your critically ill loved one in the induced coma your critically ill loved one should slowly but surely waking up. This at times can take time because just as I have explained in number one where your critically ill loved one may be sedated with short acting sedatives such as propofol. The longer sedation for the induced coma is required the more likely it is that a longer acting sedative such as midazolam is used. Midazolam is a benzodiazepine and the longer a benzodiazepine is used the higher is the risk and the likelihood that your critically ill loved one is getting addicted to it. Therefore getting your critically ill loved one out of the induced coma might have some challenges such as withdrawal symptoms and therefore a gradual weaning of the midazolam might delay waking up. The same applies to the opiates which is the pain medication that are given during an induced coma such as morphine fentanyl or sometimes ketamine. Those drugs can be addictive as well and just like with midazolam the longer your critically ill loved one has been receiving those drugs the higher the chance to go through a withdrawal. Again coming out of the induced coma and getting off the ventilator or respirator after more than 72 hours of ventilation and an induced coma might be a little bit more difficult because as a rule of thumb the longer ventilation and the induced coma is required, the higher the risk that complications and or delays occur, of course. So, once again, if your critically ill loved one is stable, can open their eyes, can follow commands, is waking up and has shown strength to breathe by themselves, there should be no reason that they can't be taken off the ventilator after three to seven days, generally speaking even if your critically ill loved one is still a little confused, agitated and sometimes even be aggressive. Let's look at the third example where an induced coma and ventilation is for more than seven days. If your critically ill loved one has been in intensive care for more than one week now and has been in an induced coma and has been ventilated for more than one week by now, you're probably wondering and you are more importantly worried when your loved one will finally come out of the induced coma and can come off the ventilator. Just like in number two, the longer your critically ill loved one has been in an induced coma, the higher the risk of your critically ill loved one going through a delay in waking up and they might also go through a phase of confusion, agitation and even aggression due to the side effects of the sedatives and opiates and due to possible or likely withdrawal from the sedatives and opiates. Again, as a general rule of thumb, you need to be patient. Even if your critically ill loved one has finally come out of the induced coma, you might experience that your critically ill loved one is confused, agitated, drowsy or aggressive. And you're probably shocked and maybe even embarrassed by what you see. Know this, it's okay. Know that it's nothing unusual and it happens all the time in intensive care. Also, know that many patients can leave intensive care whilst they are still confused as long as they are stable otherwise. What you also need to know is that most critically ill patients don't remember their time in intensive care. So don't worry too much about the confusion and agitation if that's what your critically ill loved one experiences. Now, if after one week of ventilation and an induced coma the intensive care team still doesn't feel confident to take out the breathing tube, they may suggest to insert a tracheostomy. Before they actually suggest a tracheostomy, they should try and get your loved one out of the induced coma first. And if your loved one is waking up 
and is cooperative and can breathe, the intensive care team should remove the breathing tube and give your critically ill loved one a fair go. First, to find out whether your loved one can breathe without a breathing tube and without the ventilator or respirator. If all that fails, then the intensive care team would have a fair point to suggest a tracheostomy, but once again that shouldn't be brought up before or, at, or after at least 7 to 10 days of ventilation and the induced coma. And again, it shouldn't be done until the intensive care team is certain that there is no other alternative. For more information regarding a tracheostomy and ventilation, check out our related articles such as How long does it take to come off a ventilator respirator in intensive care? And how long can you keep a critically ill patient in intensive care in an induced coma? You can find the links to these articles below the video in the text version of this blog. And if you still feel like you and your family have little to no power, control and influence, and if you still feel like the intensive care team is keeping you at arm's length, you need a quick, in-depth education that gives you peace of mind, control, power and influence. How do you do that? And how can you further leverage your level of power, influence and control whilst your loved one is critically ill in intensive care? Well, you'll get to that all-important feeling of power, control and influence when you download your free Instant Impact Report now by entering your email below. In your free Instant Impact Report, you'll learn quickly how to get real power and real control and how you can influence decision-making fast whilst your loved one is critically ill in intensive care. Our free reports help you with in-depth insight that you must know whilst your loved one is critically ill or is even dying in intensive care. Sign up for your free membership and download your free Instant Impact Report now. In your free Instant Impact Report, you learn how to speak the secret intensive care language so that doctors and nurses know straight away that you are an insider and that you know and understand what's really happening in intensive care. In your free report, you'll also discover how to ask the doctors and the nurses the right questions, how to eliminate fear, frustration, stress, struggle and vulnerability even if your loved one is dying. You get five killer tips and strategies helping you to get on the right path to control power and influence in your situation. Find out the many competing interests that are happening behind the scenes and that may impact on your critically ill loved one's treatment. Also, find out how you can be seen as equals and that you're not intimidated by the intensive care team. You'll also get crucial behind the scenes insight so that you know and understand what's really happening in intensive care and how you need to manage doctors and nurses in intensive care and it's not what you think. Thank you for tuning into this week's episode of Your Questions Answered and I'll see you again in another update next week. Make sure you also check out our blog section for more tips and strategies or send me an email to support at intensivecarehotline.com with your questions. This is Patrick Hutzel from IntensiveCareHotline.com and I'll see you again next week in another update.